One in every 10 BMWs sold is an X1, and that figure is set to rise as the compact SUV segment continues to grow. This improved version of the F48 Series Mark II model aims to capitalise on this sector's popularity, providing potential Qashqai class buyers with a premium badged option that's now an even classier choice. Efficiency, practicality and cabin quality are all strong points, plus there's now the option of plug-in hybrid power if you want it. So will this revitalised X1 continue to hit this segment's sweet spot? That's what we're here to find out. You don't primarily buy a compact SUV of this kind to throw it about, though if you do so here, you'll actually find that this car is slightly more interesting to drive than most of its class counterparts. Why? Well, because all the key elements are in place for a decent driving experience, namely a low centre of gravity, a wide track, optimised weight, a stiff body structure, and as you'd expect from a BMW, near perfect 50-50 weight distribution. And don't get us wrong, this car isn't one you take out and drive just for the fun of it, but if you do have to push on in this BMW, there's a bit more to the experience than is the case with most rivals. As before, the engine you choose will dictate whether your X1 is available in either front-driven S-Drive guise or all-wheel-driven X-Drive form. The 4x4 X-Drive layout gives you just enough on-demand traction for icy days and muddy tracks. The volume part of the range, as before, offers around 140 to 150 horsepower and concentrates on either the 18i petrol version we're trying here or the 18d diesel. We'd favour the efficient 18d, which in S-Drive manual form can manage up to 56.5 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 133 grams per kilometre of NEDC rated CO2. If you like the idea of around 190 horsepower in your X1 and can afford a bit more, your dealer will point you towards the also only 20i petrol or 20d diesel derivatives. You only get manual transmission with the lowest powered 18i and 18d variants, but even with these, most X1 buyers opt for an auto, a dual clutch Steptronic 7 speeder with petrol versions or a torque converter 8 speeder with the diesels. You have to have an auto if you want to consider the cleverest X1 variant, the X-Drive 25e plug-in hybrid. This mates a 124 horsepower version of the 89 model's 1.5 litre three-cylinder petrol engine driving the front wheels with a 95 horsepower electric motor which powers those at the rear and draws its energy from a rechargeable 9.7 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery. Keep that topped up and a 31 mile WLTP rated all electric driving range is possible. The first thing you'll notice is this new larger grille which sees the two kidney shaped intakes now meeting in the middle. The lights flanking this aperture are different too, piercing full LED beams featuring for the first time. Things have also been spruced up lower down. The previous rather bland arrangement, circular fog lamps and blanked off corner outlets, replaced by a more confident intake design with smaller rectangular LED fog lamps. Right, let's take a seat up front. This is the part of the X1 that we think will really sell this car to potential buyers. Look around and the high quality layered fascia curves around the cabin are Symmetrical wave garnished with textured aluminium, satin chrome inlays and carefully chosen splashes of bright work. As before, there's a slightly raised seating position that places you perfectly in front of a set of semi-digitalised dials. The changes made as part of the facelift package are really of the detailed kind. Things like new upholstery options and the addition of contrast stitching on the instrument panel. Of more significance is the adoption of a larger central media screen for the iDrive infotainment system, being 8.8 .8 inches as standard with a larger 10.25 inch BMW Navigation Plus touchscreen display available at extra cost. Either way, you get all the usual media features, including a connected drive menu that's particularly informative, delivering a range of downloadable apps and access to BMW's suite of online services designed to enhance your journey by sending you up-to-date information while you're at the wheel. Time to take a seat in the back, with access into the rear cabin being straightforward thanks to these reasonably large door apertures. 
And once inside, well, there's not much to complain about by class standards. There are cars in this segment that offer slightly more room for legs and heads. Volkswagen's Tiguan, for instance, but not many. And this BMW's cause is enhanced by the availability of a sliding rear bench, which offers 130 millimetres of back and forth adjustment, though you have to pay extra for it. Reclining rear seat backs are standard, and Scallop's front seat backs free up extra space for your knees, making it possible for one six footer to sit behind another in reasonable comfort. Let's take a look out back, where first impressions are encouraging. Once the powered hatch rises, you're provided with a very reasonable 508 litres of cargo capacity. To give you some context, you're looking at the same sort of space as you get in BMW's 3 Series Touring Estate, and only 42 litres less than is provided by the brand's supposedly much larger X3 model. And in summary, well, we can see why this X1 is the best-selling contender of its kind. The brand might continue to prefer not to call this an SUV, but the truth is that amongst compact models, this X1 continues to epitomise the kind of car that term now defines in today's market. It delivers all the key elements needed from a modern, fashion-led, compact family crossover, but also has an essential dose of that BMW want one factor that's done so much for the Munich maker's sales. You'll need to be convinced of that to choose one, but if you are, you'll find this Bavaria model difficult to ignore in this overcrowded sector. The X Factor? You might well think this car has it. <laughs>